Gorilla Warfare, right? Gorilla Warfare, baby. Bella to the Beast, Concrete Jungle, done. Let the gates of hell open. Tonight's odd night, special night. Rock Wallace, 2005, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky Reyes. You know what time it is, yo. Get on that Space Monkey. On the real, that Oreo cookie better known as Jay Lethal. His hands are too short to box with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him feel your bite, baby. We hungry right now. <sighs> and yo, no justice, no peace. Oh, no, man. No justice, no oh, honor. No, oh, you know what the t-shirt says, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Ain't bro. no gimmicks. We ain't no I studio gangsters. Man. This is real. Man. Title shot tonight. How you feel, baby? How I feel? How you feel? Come on, man. It's going to be a parade in Brooklyn tonight. It's like welfare. Huh? One Come shot on. deal. Nah, nah, nah. The, the stuff is, I've been here since day one in Rid of Honor, and I've been getting screwed for the world title. Since day one, me, the Toys 1 and 7, get screwed. But tonight, I got a little insurance. And boy, the Rock World is going to have a parade in New York, and of course, in Cali Love. Oh, yeah. Puerto Rico! <laughs> Rock Rollers, baby! Yeah, we gonna take it all tonight! Everybody's getting it! We don't discriminate! Everybody's getting it! Yeah! Be that! James Gibson, hate to break it to you, buddy, but titles mean more than friendship. And there's one title that I have my eyes on. And unfortunately for you, you have that title. Our time is very limited here in Ring of Honor. And buddy, I just did what I had to do last week in Chicago to ensure that I get a title shot. And that title shot is tonight. I don't care if Homicide's in this match too. It's a title shot. And that title will be mine, buddy. My own students, I brought them into this company. 90 days, we gotta go without a patient. Ladies, we're coming back. Three months at home. It's their fault, Don and Marcos! Just like three years ago, we destroyed you boys! The easiest night of our life! We'll fight them anytime, any place. Hey, yo! You little bastards, you know where to find us! Come on! <laughs> same spot and I don't see him anywhere it ends right here Carnage Crew style The Ring Crew Express battling the Carnage Crew of Logan DeVito once again. 
These two teams have been going at it for quite some time here in ROH, and this one is off in a hurry. It is going to be violent, Dave Prezak, and they're going at it, fist and fire, to kick things off here. Every confrontation between these two teams has been violent and has been bloody. Of course, it was the Ring Crew Express putting the Carnage Crew on the shelf for 90 days as a result of defeating them in Scramble Cage back at Third Anniversary Celebration Part 1. Had them sitting on the couch, sitting at home, not getting any work, getting fat, drunk, and pissed off, and they have been taking it out on Dunn and Marcos ever since their return to ROH competition. I mean, can you blame the Carnage Crew for taking out? Have you seen their wives and kids? Well, bloody brawls between these two teams every time out. Of course, they did battle at the Future Is Now in a street fight. And Death Before Dishonor 3 in an Anything Goes matchup has done taste the barricade, and so does DeVito. Able to drop down out of the way of the charging DeVito. Able to spare himself there on the outside, and he's been busted open, has been DeVito. The forehead of DeVito busted open. Loke out to the floor as well, sends him into the barricade. Would not shock me at all to see all four of these guys bloody before all said and done here. These guys have had some feud, a war if you will, here in ROH, and it is going to get settled one way or the other here tonight. Well, they have a whole lot of toys to play with around the ringside area. we got a ladder, two tables inside the ring. Of course, on the floor, weapons as well. Trying to prevent himself from being sent to that ladder, done holding on to the top rope. Meanwhile, Marcos and DeVito battling on the floor. Tornado DDT on the floor, and, and Dunn just went soaring over the top rope along with the ladder, hard to the concrete. Crashing down on the outside. Hitting hard out there, all four men now on the outside. He, he just took the ropes off that, it looked like a toy wrestling ring, and, and now he's putting it to use on Dunn as the blood flows down his face as well. Steel chair there by DeVito right across the back. Setting him up here. What's he going to do with that chair? Drops the elbow right across the chest. Damaging to himself as well as Marcos on the floor. These guys more than willing to inflict a little punishment on themselves to do some damage to their opponent. And DeVito, excuse me, Luke hits the steel. Ever since the Carnage Crew returned to ROH competition, it seems as though they've had the number of the Ring Crew Express. But every time out, you see Dunn and Marcos put up a little bit better fight. Uh, have a little bit more aggression, a more, more determination to pull off the victory. But right there, nice standing drop kick from DeVito. No one ever going to question the heart of the Ring Crew Express. They take beating after beating after beating, and they still keep coming back for more. Just choking away on Marcos on that bottom row. Anything goes in this matchup. They can put all these weapons to use. It's all legal here in Morristown. Carnage crew living up to their name here in New Jersey. Carnage at ringside. Carnage in the middle of the ring. He's got that toy ring again and cracks it over the top of his head. Well, so much for the second ring on tonight's card. Carnage Crew earned the ROH Tag Team Championship from Jimmy Jacobs and BJ Whitmer and escaped from New York. Successfully defended those titles as part of Ultimate Endurance and certainly are one of the top teams here in ROH. And right now they are in control of the matchup once again as we've seen so many times in the series between these two teams. What a suplex through the table. Look at the blood on the face of Luke on the outside. They're going through the barricades. They're almost out to the crowd. There's a cover. Now he gets his shoulder up. We've got one of the steel barricades out on the floor set up between two chairs. And right now it's done with a trash can in hand. Down across the back. See if the tide of this match turns in the favor of the Ring Crew Express here. Trying to rally the crowd behind him here. And it looks like they want to put that barricade to use. Luke able to roll out of the way and escape from that top rope maneuver. Crashing through that barricade to the floor was done. Marcos inside the ring has something similar in mind with two chairs. We've got a cover on the floor. I don't know if this is foul no anywhere. I guess it's at the referee's discretion here. He's, got He's that inside ladder. the ring. And we get, yeah, we have a ladder instead of the barricade this time inside the ring set up between two chairs. 
as now Marcos. Oh, a chair across the back of DeVito. Wicked chair shot. Gonna fire him to the outside here. What's he gonna do with him on the outside? He just set that ladder between those chairs. All four men out on the floor now, right in front of these ringside fans here at the Men in Sports Arena. Chair hurled in the direction of Marcos, and he's got one of his own. But it's DeVito with the boot to the midsection, and he drops the chair. Another vicious chair shot across the back. He's got a computer keyboard. Punch it up, ROHwrestling.com. Thanks for the plug. Crashing across the top of the head. Marco said flying through the table. A Splash Mountain neckbreaker combination. Trademark maneuver of the Carnage crew. He's got to get him back inside the ring. And we still have that ladder set up between the two chairs. Broken tables, broken Cutter. barricades. No, done in to make the save right there. I'm saying broken tables, broken barricades. We're going to have broken bodies before this one's all done. Hard kick. Up on the shoulders, Dunn's got him. Dead belly driver onto the table. He's got to cover him here. Neutralizes DeVito with the trash can, but not quite enough as he's able to make the save. And now putting that trash can to use is Marcos. Over the head of DeVito. Ring for expressing control. Marcos going up. You see that assisted senton right here with the trash can. Putting his own body on the line to do damage. And come on so close to getting the victory. Two and a half. So close to putting him away there after the senton. You still have that ladder awaiting inside the ring. Out to the floor goes Marcos. Trash can is just mangled now over the top of the head of DeVito. Looking for more plunder underneath the ring. Both members of the Carnage crew, a bloody mess inside the ring. What do the ring crew express have in mind? We got, we got a guitar. I've seen them play air guitar. But now they're putting actual guitars to use. Just destroying that guitar over the top of the heads of the Carnage crew. They need to go for a cover here. Oh, they're looking to follow up. Setting him on top of that ladder. Double team strategy here from the Ring Crew Express. Look set up on that ladder between both chairs. Sent him through the ladder. And that's it. The Ring Crew Express has scored the victory over the Carnage Crew in the weapons match. Joel Cabana, I don't care what you learnt in England mate, not going to make any difference. I've been up for 36 hours sniffing glue, I'm about ready to kill somebody. Tonight, I end it.
we have a non-grudge match added to tonight's card as Azrael to take on newcomer Jarrell Clunk, who has really been impressing down in Florida's Full Impact Pro promotion. And he is getting a shot here in Ring of Honor competition. And he has a tough test with a man who's been rising up the ranks in ROH as of late in Azrael. Yeah, this should be a very good match between two guys who are pretty even as far as size goes. They both use a very quick, fast-paced style. And Jarrell Clark looking to earn a shot here in Ring of Honor, trying to make a name for himself in the Northeast after he's been doing it on the southern scene in Florida for quite some time. Azriel elevated up and over. Going for the senton. Jarrell moves out of the way. Shoulder block to the midsection of Azriel. Jarrell brings himself back inside the ring, lands on his feet, but a double axe handle to the back. Going for a neck breaker, basically an inverted snapmare right there as he landed on his feet. Sends Azriel into the ropes. Step over by Azriel. Deep arm drag from Jarrell Clark. Arm drag from Azriel. Both men back up. Japanese arm drag from Clark. Back to his feet. Beats the arm drag from Azriel. Both men throw the drop kick. And Jarrell right back to his feet. He's proving that he wants a job here in Ring of Honor. Like I said, these two guys are lightning quick. They are so evenly matched as far as speed and size. This match might come down to whichever one of these two guys makes the first mistake and allows the other to capitalize. Right here behind Azriel, and impressed thus far by the uh, ability of Jarrell Clark. Of course, this non-grudge match on tonight's card full of grudge matches. Speaking of which, I'm really looking forward to the grudge matches later tonight, especially Colt Cabana. Nigel McGuinness once again. Tonight, Colt Cabana gets to pick the stipulation in the match against Nigel. Nice drop kick from Jarrell Clark. Takes Azriel off his feet. Follows it up with another. You gotta wonder. Goes for another drop kick there with Somersault. It lands on his feet and then connects with the Somersault drop kick. Jarrell Clark with the quickness and a cover. It's a testament to the agility and the timing of Jarrell Clark that he, he saw Azriel moving out of the way of the third drop kick, was able to catch himself and finally connect on the second attempt. You talking about Colt Cabana and Nigel McGinnis later on tonight. You gotta wonder, what does Colt Cabana have in store for Nigel now that he's back from his sabbatical in Europe, trying to find himself, study up on Nigel's style and come back with something tonight in store for Nigel McGinnis. What does Colt Cabana have up his sleeve? It's a mystery to everybody, but no doubt it will be an excellent matchup between those two, as usual. Right now, it's Drew Clark in control of the arm of Azriel. Had that Fujiwara armbar locked in. Azriel able to get to his feet here as Jarrell controls that top wrist lock. Forces him into the corner. Irish whip out of the corner. Goes Azriel hard to the buckle. Jarrell follows him up and over. He's elevated, able to land on the second rope, though. Mule kick catches Azriel coming in on the shoulders. Trying to go for a run, Azrael hanging on and drops him face first. Successfully able to hold his ground and block that reverse Rana attempt and gets a near fall to follow it up. You know, thinking back to the uh, first night of the grudges back in the summer of 2003 in Boston, of course we saw the group versus the prophecy. That feud was settled at night of grudges one. The bloody Raven and B.J. Whitmer versus CM Punk and Colt Cabana matchup. And of course, that classic Paul London versus AJ Styles matchup. The only two times, the only time that those two have met in professional wrestling. Tonight will certainly live up. Tonight of the Grudges one. Nice dragon screw leg whip from Azrael. Azrael trying to go to work on the leg of Jarrell Clark there, trying to neutralize the speed and take away a lot of that high-flying offense of Jarrell Clark. He likes to utilize that 630 off the top. And Azrael going a long way in eliminating that move from the arsenal, going to work on the leg. Basement drop kick to the hamstring there. Well, Azrael knows the reputation of Jarrell Clark. Azrael spent some time down in Full Impact Pro himself and uh, has had time to sort of scout the talent that Jarrell Clark brings to the table. He knows that he uses his speed and his agility to his advantage, and to take out the legs of Jarrell Clark is a very wise strategy here by Azrael. Tying Clark in the ropes upside down there, hung up in the corner. A little unorthodox, a chop to the thigh, and a drop kick to the thigh as well. Focusing on that body part, unorthodox, but it does the trick. Pulls him out of the corner and gets a near fall. Another two count, Clark able to kick out. Azrael drags him up to his feet, fires a forearm shot to the back and a hard chop to the chest. Gonna shoot Clark off, no, he puts on the brakes. Goes through, looking for a pump handle here, baby. Up and over. Just plants him chest first with the pump handle. Nice maneuver from Clark. 
See that leg still giving me a little trouble there. He's slow to follow up here. Trying to use that agility right here as he springboards off those ropes. Into the moonsault. Hooks the leg. Not enough to put Azriel away here. And Clark going for the drop kick. Trying to shake some life back into that leg. Going right back to work on the arm. The offensive move he was working on earlier before Azriel began to work on his leg. Clark likes to use that submission move too. He uses the cross arm breaker and right there he drives the top rope right into the armpit there of Azriel. As he sends himself all the way to the floor. He uses his own momentum over the top rope. Driving the arm across the top rope to do even more damage to Azriel. As I'm saying he likes to use the cross arm breaker as he springs off the top. Right across the arm. I know it's the Rose courts that arm, holding on to it. Right into his submission. Referee Thompson Clark getting in there to see if Azrael needs to give it up. Azrael close to the ropes with his feet. If he can reach out, there it is. Great ring positioning right there. Good ring presence from Azrael. Knew where he was at, was able to reach that bottom rope with his legs. Azrael also likes to soften guys up with the Clark bar. Submission hold through the ropes. Locks that attempt from Azria. And more damage to the arm, driving the knees right to the shoulder. Jerome Clark obviously seeing a weakness he thinks in Azriel's offense. Going for the Clark bar right here. And he's got it cinched in, but he only has till a count of five to keep that hold. But how much damage can he do in those five seconds on that arm? Cover here, Lax. You gotta hook the leg, man. Jerome Clark. He needs to go for a proper cover if he wants to work his way into permanent ROH competition. Crowd starting to get behind both men here. Azrael trying to fight Jarrell Clark off. Hard chop and a forearm. Combination of strikes and the ends of Geary upside the head. Big running boot from Azrael takes Jarrell Clark down. But both men. Very spent by this point in the matchup as senior official Todd Sinclair applies the double count. Azrael back to his feet. See that arm still giving him trouble as he sends Clark off the ropes, connects with a back elbow. Clark slow to his feet. Drop kick followed up by Azrael. Staying on him right here as he sends Jarrell into the corner. Big back body drop. Azriel getting his second win here, trying to pull Jarrell back up off the canvas. It's again, he's gonna send Jarrell off the ropes. Tries to send himself through, connects with a shoulder block to the midsection of Azriel who followed him in. Looks like he might be trying to suplex him to the floor here. Azriel trying to hold on and block the attempt. Both men on the apron. Jarrell Clark trying to earn a shot here at Ring of Honor. He's gonna do anything he can to try and get that shot. Drives the knee across the back of the neck. Even if that means taking Azriel out right here in New Jersey. Azriel hung up in the ropes. Jarrell out to the apron. Both men showing the wear and tear as this match rolls on. Oh! Moonsault off the top. Come away. No, only two. Jarrell Clark back to a standing position. Azriel. Trying to dig down for some extra energy, holding that arm close to his body. Jarrell's kind of gotten away from working on that arm the last minute or so here. Trying to get him up there for the electric chair. Jarrell Clark just plants him. Got to cover him here. He's got to hook the leg. Azrael hanging in there, able to kick out and get that shoulder off the canvas. Third or fourth time, Jarrell might have had Azrael put away, but failed to hook the leg. Hard chop from Azrael, fires back. Backing him into the corner. Jarrell holding on. Wheelbarrow fires him down to the canvas hard. Cover here again. Able to get that shoulder up. Several near falls here from Jarrell Clark, unable to put Azriel away. Jarrell Clark known for using that 630 splash. Could be trying to soften him up for that very maneuver. Ducks the clothesline. Another drop kick to the thigh by Azriel. He connected full force with that leg. Could be going for the electric chair here. Can he get it? 
lets him! Cover! Jarrell Clark able to get his shoulder up to two and three quarters. Somehow able to get that shoulder up. Azrael planted him right there in the center of the ring. Jarrell Clark digging down and showing some guts here. Clark firing back. Backs Azrael into the corner now. Series of forearm strikes. And elevates him to the top. See that thigh still giving him some problems as he's slow to make his way to the top. Looks for Hurricane Rana, but Azrael puts on the brakes. This could leave Azrael in perfect position to go for the double stop. To the back of the head! And that is it! Azrael puts away Jerome Clark with a very strong showing for the newcomer here to Ring of Honor. Jay Lethal takes on yet another member of the Rottweilers in Ricky Reyes. Lethal's had so many problems with the Rottweilers. Low key, homicide. Now Reyes trying to take this kid out. They injured his neck a while back, but he is back and he is looking for revenge. Of course, Jay Lethal has been trying his best to score a victory over Low Key. Finally hit that dragon suplex on him and get that three count, but he's been unsuccessful. They did battle just last weekend in the Midwest. Jay Lethal cheated out of the victory there as the referee had to put a stop to the matchup as it just got too fierce between those two competitors. He's right now jacking for position with Ricky Reyes. The men able to get much of an advantage. They're gonna face off in a stalemate here in the center of the ring. Julia Smokes in the corner of Reyes here tonight. Usual looking to involve himself whenever one of his charges are in the ring. Julia Smokes, not one to shy away from involving himself in a match when the opportunity presents itself. Reyes sent to the ropes, shoulder tackle, down goes Jay Lethal. And once again. And we see Julia Smokes on the outside. Who's the unknown thug there? I've never seen this guy with the, with the Rottweilers before. Well, the Rottweilers always have a little bit of backup in their corner or watching from behind the curtain or watching from the crowd. They like to control the situation no matter what and keep people off guard. Like to play the numbers game too. Very, well, very seldom that we see them go at it one-on-one. -on -one. When you see one, there's usually two or three not far behind. Nice leapfrog from Jay Lethal going for the hip toss. Reyes blocks and gets hip toss of his own, but Lethal lands on his feet. Swings the kick, Lethal ducks. Arm drag from Lethal. Follows it up with the drop kick. That's what Lethal has to do, utilize his quickness here against Reyes. He's gonna send him off the ropes. Sets a little too soon, he's caught with a hard kick. Ducks the clothesline. Belly to back! Drops it right on his neck. Only able to get a one count. Of course, these two men were on opposite teams back at the homecoming on July 22nd in Philadelphia in a six-man tag team matchup, hitting the Rottweilers against Samoa Joe, James Gibson, and Jay Lethal. Another cover from Lethal again, only able to get a one count. 
Of course, we had that crazy tag team brawl in Chicago last week as Lethal teams with his mentor, Samoa Joe, to take on Loki and Homicide. They battled all over the Frontier Fieldhouse. One of the most memorable, brawl, memorable brawls in Ring of Honor history. As now it's Reyes sent out to the floor. Feeling the effects and Julius Smoke's trying to fire him up. Motivational skills from Julius Smokes on the outside. Lethal up and over, Reyes catches the foot, drives him face first to the apron. There you see the triple team tactics from the Rottweilers. All three men sending Lethal hard to the guardrail. And now Reyes taking the attention of Paul Turner as one of those thugs going to work out on the floor on Lethal. Just stomping away on his chest. It was the Rottweilers that put Lethal on the shelf doing damage to that neck. Back in Manhattan Mayhem with the cop killer double stun combination. Loki and Homicide putting him out of action. And he's been set on revenge ever since. They were unable to get the job done, but they are not finished trying. Snap suplex takes Lethal over. Cover here. Two count for Reyes. Ricky Reyes, a very crisp wrestler, former one half of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions along with Rocky Romero. Just stomping away on Lethal. Picks him back up. He's gonna fire him into the corner hard. Once again, series of kicks to the midsection. There's a warning from Paul Turner. Pulls him out of the corner now. Scooping a hard slam by Reyes. Cover, hooks the leg. Making Lethal expend that energy to kick out once again. You're not gonna beat a Jay Lethal with a body slam, but every time he has to kick out, every time he has to find a way to escape a pinning predicament, you sap just a little bit more strength out of him to make it that much harder later on as this match wears on. And Lethal absorbing every forearm shot from Reyes and firing right back. And now a series of them from Lethal, followed by the European uppercut. And a chop, Lethal with the momentum. Cuts the clothesline and connects with the back heel kick. Only able to get a two count. Reyes kicks out after that flurry of forearm shots. Spinning back heel kick from Reyes though. Catches Lethal right on the chin. Reyes throws some lethal kicks. Crowd here getting behind Jay Lethal. Hard kick to the spine of Lethal. That silenced the crowd there momentarily. Reyes though, handful of hair, has him up. For a belly to back of his own, drives him into the center of the ring. A little bit of payback. Cover. No, only gets two. Didn't hook the leg, instead just driving the forearm across the bridge of the nose. Trying to do a little bit more damage to Lethal. Hard Irish whip to the buckle. Ricky Ray is a very methodical wrestler, very smart wrestler. He's a world-traveled athlete, spends a great deal of time, not only here in Ring of Honor, but competing in Mexico as well as Japan. Soften up the back there of Lethal, just driving the knee right into the spine while he pulls on the hair of Jay Lethal. As great of an athlete as he is, he doesn't need to resort to tactics like this, just pulling on the hair of Lethal. That's the Rottweilers at their finest right there. All three of them tremendous athletes who, if they chose to just wrestle, would be among the greatest athletes in Ring of Honor today. But they just have a mean streak in them. With Julia Smokes on the outside, there's nothing these guys won't stoop to. Reyes just lining up the chest. A lethal in the corner versus that Irish whip and Reyes into the buckle. Going for the monkey flip, but Reyes holds his ground. Looks like Lethal was going for a triangle choke there on the top. Reyes able to escape, but can't get out of the way of that leaping leg Larry. Lethal with the cover. No, Reyes able to kick out. Lethal up to his knees, now to his feet, trying to get the crowd behind him one more time, off the ropes. Caught with a spine buster! Oh, so very close right there, and, and Smokes can't believe it. Lethal able to get that shoulder up just in the nick of time. Smokes all over the referee, now look at him just standing on the face. Adding insult to injury right here. Ricky Reyes in command. With the ropes he comes and drives that knee down onto the neck. Once again, going right back to that damaged neck. Jay Lethal, very resilient competitor. He can take a hell of a beating and keep on fighting. We've seen it 
in the past in confrontations with Homicide and low key. Well, they thought they were able to take him out when they did the damage to his neck, but he was able to fight back, make his way back to ROH, and he is here still looking to get that elusive victory over low key, and he won't be satisfied until he hits the Dragon Suplex. Back into the corner now, driving the shoulder right into the midsection of Lethal. The pain etched on the face of Lethal. Reyes just drove that shoulder right into the rib cage. Fuck you, New Jersey. This place stinks like ass. Reyes taking a lot of time here, going with the fans here in New Jersey. But Lethal drops him, face and chest first down to the canvas. Both men are down. Lethal able to buy himself a little bit of time here. He needs to make the most of this opportunity. Try to catch his breath. Fight back to his feet. Crowd encouraging him. Five count. Neither man even able to make it to their knees at this point. Lethal able to use the ropes though. Maybe to his advantage. Trying to get his way back up in the corner here. Look at Smokes on the outside. Lethal back to his feet. Reyes back up as well. Reyes staggered and runs into a boot. And a clothesline out of the corner from Lethal. And a second knocks Reyes down hard. Back elbow takes Reyes off his feet. Lethal feeling it here. Hard chop across the chest, make it two. Reyes down to one knee, trying to block the attempt on a third chop. But he finally gets it, does Lethal. Smokes again encouraging Reyes to get back to his feet and fight. Is that the translation of what he just said? I've been to Brooklyn once or twice. Lethal able to get the boot up into the face of Reyes. Off the second he comes and plants him with the DDT. Hooks the leg. So close right there. And you notice that thug at ringside up on the apron. Ready to jump in that ring if need be. If he sees Ricky Reyes in a bad way. Going for that running suplex. Reyes looking for the German reversal by Lethal. Has the waist lock. Catches a couple of elbows from Reyes. Spins around. And gets caught by a suplex from Lethal. That running release suplex. Lethal could be looking for the top rope flying headbutt. And he gets it. Oh, so close. Reyes able to kick out. Two and three quarters, Reyes somehow able to get that shoulder up. Lethal looking for the dragon suplex. He may have Reyes softened up just enough here to put him away. If he hits it, that might be it, but Reyes fires an elbow to the face. Follows Lethal in. There he is, he's got him hooked. Can he take him over? Oh, they hung up on the apron and a low blow from Reyes behind the referee's back. Fisherman Buster from Reyes. Two and a half again, Lethal kicks out. So much heart in this kid. Reyes looking to follow up. Powerball! One, two. Oh, oh, only two. And Reyes can't believe it. Reyes had trouble getting that one leg hooked over that other outside shoulder, and Lethal was able to get it up just in the nick of time. Ducks the kick. There's a dragon suplex. Gets the Dragon Suplex on Reyes and scores the victory. Finally, he's defeated a member of the Rottweilers, and now he has his sights set on low key. It was a sportsmanship uh, match in there. I respected you, you respected me. It's kind of what Ring of Honor was all about. I'd like to extend my hand. Maybe to a new friendship, huh? We like go places, Gabriel. I can see you ain't taking this seriously, mate. Maybe we shouldn't be tag team partners. Trying to roll again, and I wonder if that was an accident. When you're not kicking people in the balls, you're such a great wrestler. Sunset flip by Cabana, trying to get it. I thought I was better than him. I got a lot to learn. I wanted to have straight matches with him. Competitive matches. I need to get rid of Nigel to get it. I need to solve this problem. I'm serious, man.
Now keep your mouth shut, wankers, for one second. Banner, I heard you've been to Europe. Look at you, you sprawl. So, are you going to tell me what sort of match this is going to be? It doesn't matter, because more than likely, if I didn't invent the match, I more than likely perfected it. So what's it going to be? Is it a European rules match? Is it a wig and snake pit match? What about a Welsh coal miners match? Alright, I've had enough. These wankers have had enough. Tell me now, what type of match is it? And why on earth are you wearing that stupid football shirt? Shots and close fists are legal. Kicks. Kicks are legal. Shots. Completely legal. It appears everything is legal. Old Cabana unleashing everything here on Nigel McGinnis. Taking it out to the floor here. If I want to throw you into the railing. If I want to bring you into the crowd. If I want to hit you with a chair shot. specialty, the soccer riot match. Basically anything is legal. As he's just tearing everything apart and unleashing chairs, headbutts, low blows, chops, everything on Nigel McGinnis. We were wondering what Colt Cabana learned when he was over in Europe preparing to come back and finish this feud with Nigel McGinnis. Apparently his training consisted of going down to the pub and having a few pints with some football hooligans. And it's soccer hooligans. Football, right. Just hurling chair after chair onto McGinnis. This is, an, this is a big change from those European rules matches. Cole Cabana, a one-man chair throwing incident on the outside. And Lenny Leonard, it's all legal. Might have been a little quicker for Cole Cabana to just tell us what was illegal. And you know what else is legal? The referee cutting pitfalls on the floor. They are going to take it all over the men in sports arena here in New Jersey. Over the boards, making their way to the outside to the cheap seats here in Menin. Everybody's getting a front row 
seat for this matchup as they go all over the building. Just unleashing on McGinnis. I don't think Nigel's got any offense in as of yet. It's all Cabana. Cabana had enough of all the dirty tactics from McGinnis. The low blows, accidental and on purpose. Shots with the iron, you name it. McGinnis pulled it out of his bag of tricks. Cabana has had enough, and he is taking it to McGinnis. As they're making their way to the top row here in Morristown. Nigel with a shot to the midsection. It's legal. So is that forearm shot. His British style, perfectly legal. Into the wall, it's legal. And the wall is legal. Going down the stairs, the hard way, is legal. Hard kick to the face from Cabana. A long way down for Nigel. And these fans are loving it. These two very skilled scientific wrestlers, masters of that European style of wrestling. We're not seeing a whole lot of that in this particular match in their series. The final matchup between McGinnis and Cabana here at Night of the Grudges 2. Cabana just crotches him on that railing. Hanging above that walkway, Nigel in a bad, bad spot here. Kicking away at the face of McGinnis, trying to knock him off the railing, he does. Telling Cabana to jump. He is a long way up. And we see Cole Cabana fly here. Nigel McGinnis saw that Cabana was up there and started walking away so that Cabana could not hit a high risk maneuver such as that. But Cabana's coming after him. Charging down the stairs, close lines him over the boards and back over the floor. Former tag team partners, they brought out the best in one another as opponents as well and sort of brought out the worst in Nigel McGinnis with those low blows. to these fans. <laughs> Solidly behind Cabana. What would you expect? McGinnis calling them wankers at the start. <laughs> and it is all Colt Cabana. <laughs> no dancing and playing from Colt Cabana tonight. America number one, the UK Hockey Fan holding a chair and drives him head first into it. Cabana finding all sorts of friendly faces on the outside. Fan interaction at its finest here in Ring of Honor. And fourth between the two chairs goes the head of McGinnis. Give it to me. Cabana trying to scramble yeah. the brains of Nigel McGinnis here. Uh, yeah. But McGinnis with the shot, perhaps a little bit low, but hey, legal. And through the chairs goes Cabana. Finally, Nigel able to mount some offense here. And now it's Nigel with the chair. Hey, you gotta remember, Lenny, the winner of this matchup gets to pick whether he wants a world or pure title shot next week at Dragon Gate Invasion in Buffalo. So a lot is on the line in this matchup, not just who gets bragging rights as the winner of this series between Cabana and McGinnis. Yeah, we like to say how important it is to win every time out here in Ring of Honor with a world title match on the line. If that's what you choose, nothing more important than winning in a match like this. Revenge taking on a whole new meaning here. Back toward the ring they go. As McGinnis maybe trying to bring this back inside the ring to turn it into more of a wrestling match rather than a fight. Well, that may be to Nigel's advantage as he sends him hard to the guardrail. Face first on the outside. Kicking away at the back of Cabana. Finally, they're gonna make their way back to the relative safety of the ring. That's exactly what Nigel has in mind. Now he's gonna maybe slap a cravat on Cabana. 
Somehow after getting hit with eight or nine chair shots, I don't think a cravat is going to be first on his list. Well, Nigel's specialty is the scientific wrestling, and it would be in his best interest to do just that here. As he kicks away at the back once again. Lions are showing his football skills. Cabana kicking out though. Feeling the effects of those kicks. Crowd definitely on the side of Colt Cabana here. It's a nice European uppercut in the corner. And again. Nice combination from McGinnis. And a headbutt. Nigel just rocks Cabana in the corner with a series of hard strikes and a headbutt. Cabana slumped against the bottom turnbuckle. Nigel with that football. The soccer ball. That's what I said, football. It's football on the continent, David. Okay, Nigel. Wide left. <laughs> and Nigel a little bit frustrated. He's a wrestler. He didn't have much time for football. He didn't have much time to prepare for the stipulation in this match. Cabana gets the feet up right to the chest. Sends McGinnis back down to the canvas. Cabana slow to follow up though, able to buy himself some time here. Nigel flat on his back. Cabana wants that soccer ball again. And there it goes on the other side. The overshot, man. There we go. Now he's got Nigel in the very same position that Cabana was just in. Cabana showing Nigel that in America we play sports where you're allowed to use your hands. Setting up McGinnis on the second row. Nigel trying to free himself from this position. We've seen Nigel McGinnis dish up many the low blow in the series between these two. Oh, and there's the receipt, Nigel. McGinnis out on the floor trying to regroup. Check to see if everything's all right down there. Cabana all the way up top. Nobody hold. Pays the price all the way down to the concrete. McGinnis moves out of the way. Nursing his injury to his lower nutsack region. Trying to pull Cabana back up. Cabana crashing hard on the knees. And a low blow from McGinnis. Are we tied? Yes, I believe it's one all. Now we've got the uh, timekeeper's table here at ringside. We saw the plunder early on as Dunn and Marcos put away the carnage crew in that weapons match. And he's got that iron as well. He pulled that iron up to the ring apron. And the table awaits below as well. Oh, he's going to try to suplex it from the ring through the table. Cabana trying to use his leverage to block. Shots to the midsection to McGinnis. Brings him in, but he lands on his feet. Up and over, but lands on the apron. He's able to hang on to the top rope. Cabana, though, is going to go off the top. Excuse me, over the top as he hangs on himself. Both men saving themselves from crashing through the table and now jockeying for position here on the ring apron. Who's gonna go through this table into the midsection? Some battle of wills here on the apron. Come on, Cole. Yes. Nigel trying to prevent himself from being sent through the table. Cabana really fighting for it. Hard shot to the ribs and one to the back of the head from Nigel. Nigel back inside the ring. Cabana still on the apron. And Cabana climbing up. Nigel turning the wrong way. Missile drop kick. Oh, but he only gets two. 
So close. Cole Cabana less than half a count away from being able to pick whatever title match he wants here. Next weekend, Cabana with the moonsault. Nigel with the shoulder up. Table and the iron still awaits. And now Cabana's got that iron. A little payback maybe for Colt here. It's legal. The fans are saying so he must be. Another love low from the Guinness. Puts a stop to whatever Cabana had in mind with that iron. DDT! Nigel able to gain the advantage. Still struggling to get up. He was beaten all over the building here at the start of this match. Somehow able to fight his way back. Cabana struggling to get to his feet. And now Nigel going to put a charity use inside the ring. What could he have in mind here? We still have the iron inside the ring as well. Kicking away the side of the head of Cole Cabana. Cabana trying to crawl to the outside. Nigel has another chair in the ring now. Headbutts, legal chair shots. He chops. Cabana trying to go up top again. Oh, he's gonna try and suplex him through the chairs? Trying to go for the superplex. Can Nigel get it? Or can Cabana fight his way out of this position? Hard right hands from Cabana. Nigel hanging on though. Nigel staying on his feet. He's got the iron right upside the back. Cabana goes through the table! Cover! Cabana kicks out! How did he kick out? He got the iron across the top of the head and sent through the table to the floor and he still kicked out! Nigel pushing that table to the other side of the ringside floor. Rolls back inside the ring as Cabana still on the concrete. Cabana trying to struggle just to try and make it to his feet. How is he even able to get this close to his feet? He's got that iron again though, does Nigel? Cabana going underneath the ring. Got one, of the ropes, one of the ropes from the ring skirts. Nigel trying to pull Cabana into the center of the ring. Oh, that wasn't a, that's, a, that's the court to another iron. Cabana brought his own iron. And that's Nigel across the head. There's a cover. Only two. So close. Two and three quarters. Nigel McGinnis somehow able to dig down and kick out. I never thought we would see an iron duo inside of a ring of honor ring during a matchup. But we are right here at Night of the Grudges 2. These guys pulling out all the stops with that all important title shot on the line next week. Not just revenge on the line here in this matchup between these two former tag team partners. Just duking it out. Nigel on his knees. Fires the forearm into Cabana. Cabana connects with the shot. Nigel back up to his feet though. Just trading shots right in the center of the ring. Cabana with the advantage. Nigel goes for the forearm. Off the ropes. And Cabana with the lariat. Cover. And that's three. Colt Cabana with the victory. And now Colt Cabana has his choice. A world title shot. A pure title shot. Coming up at Dragon Gate Invasion in Buffalo next week. Later on tonight, Cabana will let us know exactly which title he wants a shot at.
Nigel McGuinness, no matter what match we do, this is the ring of honor where men are honorable. Nigel McGuinness, I'm hurting. I ain't going to be able to sleep tomorrow. But buddy, we have no more matches lined up. You gave me the run for my life. Ring of honor, I extend my hand to you. Whether you accept it or not, that's up to you, Nigel. But I respect you more than you'd ever know. his eyes off the prize and look at this he's got a chain homicide wrapping a chain around his forearm who was that thug that just handed him that chain referee doesn't see any of this lariat with that chain wrapped around the forearm cover it was like th yeah, wait,
Referee Mike Keener hands off the prize in this matchup as James Gibson makes his first defense of the Ring of Honor World title in an elimination three-way matchup against both Spanky and the notorious 187 Homicide. Joining me at this time on commentary, Jimmy Bauer. You better believe I'm gonna call James Gibson's first title defense. And you wanna talk about Night of Grudges, we have a lot of issues going on in this one. As Homicide and James Gibson started out. Gibson firing knees into the midsection of Homicide, plants him with the body slam. Of course, Gibson and Homicide have had their problems with each other as Gibson now chasing Spanky. The betrayal of Spanky last week. Blindsiding James Gibson with the super kick. The slice bread number two when Gibson and Spanky were going for the ROH Tag Team titles. Spanky, he's made it clear that he did it because he wants his shot at the world title before he leaves Ring of Honor. Of course, both Gibson and Spanky on borrowed time in Ring of Honor before heading to WWE. Gibson did state that he will stay in Ring of Honor as long as he is Ring of Honor World Champion. He doesn't plan on losing that title anytime soon. He's here to stay. What an emotional title victory that was last week in Dayton at Redemption. 
A lot of homicide supporters here tonight, Dave. And it looks as though Spanky wants no part of James Gibson here as he goes out to the floor and Spanky trying to run away. Homicide chasing after Spanky as well. All three of these men want to walk away tonight wearing that championship. I think Homicide and James Gibson realized that Spanky was just watching them beat the crap out of each other, so now they're making Spanky pay. Double team work as they send Spanky into the ropes. That body drop high into the lights. Of course, this is a unique match for the world title to be involved in an elimination three-way. This was originally signed as Gibson versus Homicide, which is definitely a grudge match after the future is now, after what we saw at the homecoming with Homicide using the chain on James Gibson. However, after Spanky turned on his best friend James Gibson for his greed for the world title last week in Chicago, this was changed to a three-way match. Spanky hung up in the trio well. And Homicide comes charging with the drop kick right to his face. Homicide has been involved in some of the classic battles here in ROH for the world title. As he dupes Gibson in, and Gibson should know better than to trust Homicide. You don't trust any member of the Rock Line. And, and what was Homicide talking about earlier tonight saying that he's got insurance? And the thought of whatever he's got planned scares me. I mean, we saw it happen when he almost defeated Samoa Joe for the world title. He thought he had it won. Then the next thing we know, at Reborn Stage 1, the lights go out and Samoa Joe gets a fireball to the face. What a plan that was. You never know what the Rottweilers have up their sleeves, especially Homicide, the leader of the Rottweilers, as he's in command of the matchup right here. Gibson, hard to the buckle. Going for the monkey flip is Homicide, and Gibson gets launched. Homicide has been involved in so many classic world title matches, whether it was at Generation Next against Samoa Joe, whether it's his first shot against Samoa Joe at the original Do or Die. I mean, whether it's Best of American Super Juniors against Austin Aries, whether it's Death Before His Honor 2 Part 1 in Milwaukee against Samoa Joe, what a match that was. All the classics, each time Homicide denied for the world title. A lot of fans here coming from New York City because they want to see Homicide win the belt right outside of New York City here in Morristown, New Jersey. A little encouragement from Julia smokes out on the floor as Spanky trying to crawl away from Homicide. Gibson has a moment to try to catch his breath out on the apron. Homicide in the buckle. Spanky comes charging, elevated, lands on the apron, connects with the forearm strike. Right into the clutches of Gibson. He's got Homicide up for the vertical suplex. And a little bit of teamwork, I guess, from Gibson and Spanky, although maybe a little inadvertent. As Spanky breaks up that pin attack. James Gibson made his ROH debut against Spanky in an immediate classic at the third anniversary celebration part two. Who will ever forget that match? That was a match of sportsmanship, though. Spanky staying on his feet with the waist lock. Standing switch, clubbing across the back of Spanky. Trying to take him over with the German. Homicide, sunset flip, German, but hey, Spanky lands on his feet. And Gibson almost pinned right there, but Spanky breaks it up, kicking Homicide right in the face. Is Spanky's ego so big that he wants to be the one to pin James Gibson? I mean, he had no reason to break up that pinfall otherwise. Yeah, it's an elimination match. Uh, I think that Spanky wants to be the one to pin his former best friend James Gibson. That's despicable. We've seen a little bit of an ego, a swelled ego out of Spanky ever since Chicago. As now he's chopping away at the chest of Homicide. Spanky was willing to sacrifice his friendship to get a shot at that world title. Homicide with Spanky in the corner, lands a shot right to the side of the jaw, chop across the chest. Sends Spanky into the ropes, step over by Spanky, Homicide over the head, release, belly to belly suplex. Cover! That's Spanky with the shoulder up. A lot of fans making the trip over from New York City and Brooklyn in particular to see Homicide potentially win the world title tonight. Next with the back elbow, flying for Gibson. He's got both Gibson and Spanky down as Homicide going after the leg of Gibson. Clubbing down across the thigh into an STF. But Spanky back to his feet. And now he's letting Homicide wear down James Gibson. You know it's going to take a lot more than this to make James Gibson tap, especially with the world title on the line. Spanky hitting the ropes. And choosing not to really do anything. He's going to let Homicide unleash the damage. And Homicide's sort of realizing that. 
He's using Homicide to soften up Gibson. And Gibson is in pain. Gibson is going to be able to withstand a lot, though, as you know that he doesn't want to be a fluke champion. He wants to prove that he's a worthwhile champion. He wants to stay here in ROH and defend that belt with pride and honor. He called winning the belt the biggest night of his career, and that was no exaggeration. He meant every word of that speech in Dayton last week. The throat of Gibson right over that bottom rope. Homicide now, out on the apron. Drops the leg! Gibson is out of it, he tumbles to the floor. And Smokes loves it. Uh, Julia Smokes, always a distraction at ringside. That's exactly how they roll him, bro. Homicide ringing away on the arm of James Gibson, sends him into the barricade. Homicide very methodical here as Gibson favoring that arm. Gibson has definitely taken the most abuse so far in this match. Spanky right now having words with Julia Smokes, but I think he's really just trying to avoid getting in on the action, although now he's running away. And I don't think he's, he knows that Homicide was just waiting around the corner. Spanky back inside the ring, rolls out to the floor. Uh, Spanky's very sneaky. He's proven that right now. As now we have Gibson and, and, and Homicide one more time. We saw this battle in New York. The future is now a great match there. Homicide winning after a low blow on a lariat. Gibson wanting revenge. Going for the cop killer right here. Can he get it? Gibson fights his way out of it. German suplex with the bridge. But Spanky with the low blow to break it up. Well, Mike Keeter's got to do something about that. I don't think that he thought that it was a low blow. I mean, he was looking at the shoulders on that cover attempt, didn't see the low blow. Mike Keener, one of the best officials in the wrestling business today. Spanky now with Homicide. Sends him in, no, reversal the Irish whip. Spanky off the ropes, leap frog from Homicide. Back heel kick connects. You might remember, as we got a cover. Spanky and Homicide involved in a great match back at round robin challenge three. Homicide chops away at the chest of Spanky. Into the buckle he goes. Homicide charges. And Spanky catches him and drives him face first into the second turnbuckle. Pulls him out of the corner now. Spanky with Homicide. Sent in. That's the clothesline attempt. And Homicide with the toe pick on Elo. Taking out Gibson on the floor. As he was setting the ropes, he saw Gibson waiting and just soared. And now it's Spanky waiting for the right opportunity to take advantage himself. And he does. Takes Homicide down to the concrete. And this New Jersey crowd definitely knows what Spanky is all about now. They heard about what happened last week at Punk the Final Chapter when he turned on his best friend to get this world title shot. Gibson demanding that Spanky be put into this match. And there's a, about 20 to 30 percent of this crowd from New York City here to support Homicide. Spanky rolls back inside the ring as Homicide is down. Gibson's still out on the floor. Spanky pulls Homicide back up, but Homicide scoops him, plants him with the slam. Could homicide this, looking to go up top. Could this finally be his night? Back to his feet as Spanky connects with the forearm. Up to the second he goes. Maybe looking for the superplex. Gibson back in the ring. Across the back with the forearm on Spanky. Gibson now to the second himself. All three men up on the ropes. And all three go crashing down on the canvas. The action has really been intense in this three-way. Nobody taking a breath in this one. Referee Mike Keener surveying the wreckage. We could have another classic at Night of Grudges, just like we saw at the first one between Paul London and AJ Styles. Gibson connects with the forearm on Spanky. Homicide as well. Spanky sent off. Back body drop. And more of the same for Homicide. Gibson getting all fired up here. Built a world backbreaker. Cover. Only gets two. Takes his attention to Homicide. Gibson trying to work over both of his opponents at the same time. But Homicide going for the Enzigiri. Gibson ducks off the ropes. He comes. Ducks the clothesline. Spinebuster. 
He planted him. Cover. Homicide able to kick out. Gibson giving it his all here in his first ROH World Title defense. And he hopes it's the first of many. Gibson wants to defend that belt with pride, with honor. He's even taking it to other promotions like Austin Aries and Samoa Joe did. Setting up for the Tiger Driver, but Spanky saw it and connected with the ends of Geary to break it up. James Gibson, he's scheduled if he makes it past this and makes it past Buffalo next week, he will be taking the belt to FIP. Spanky, send to the buckle. Homicide charges into the boot. To the second goes Spanky, but Homicide connects with the Ace Crusher off the rope. Cover. Oh, too close to the rope. Spanky able to grab hold of the bottom rope to break up the pin attempt. Homicide has to start, start thinking about that Laird and Cop Killer. Spanky, he likes to use the slice bread number two. James Gibson's got the Tiger Driver. All these men really taking a beating in this one so far. Don't forget, it's elimination. Trying to go up and over in the corner, but Homicide catches Spanky. Power slam. Homicide. Going out to the apron himself, climbing up top. And those, those fans in support of Homicide getting behind him right here. Goes for the headbutt but took way too much time. Gibson going for the Tiger Driver. Yes. Oh, and from the floor, Julius Smokes pulls referee Mike Keener to the floor before his own can count three. And Gibson goes soaring and takes him out. Spanky now looking to follow up on Homicide inside the ring. He likes to use that frog splash. After the Tiger Driver, the frog splash could definitely finish Homicide off. And what's this? One of those thugs at ringside taking advantage of the situation. The referee has his back turned to the action. And now Homicide's got that chain. Oh, we've seen him use that chain before. It backfired on him against Matt Hardy, but it worked for him against James Gibson. Gibson back inside the ring, Spanky hung up in the corner. Homicide uses that chain on Gibson once again. He's got him covered. Wait a second, referee Mike Keener sees the chain. He's not gonna count that pin attempt. Great call by Keener. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Referee Mike Keener has disqualified Homicide. Great call by Mike Keener. These New Yorkers might not like it, but Homicide brought a chain to the ring. That's absolutely despicable, and it's Homicide's own fault for trying to use that chain. It's not an anything goes matchup. You can't put the chain to use. Homicide disqualified in this elimination matchup. Oh, hold on. I, I think we got another story developing. Spanky's clutching at that knee, of course, and it fell against the steel when he was crouched on the top rope. And, and it's to the point where Keener called the other officials from the back. They were looking at Spanky. Spanky might be seriously injured here. And also Homicide, he's been disqualified. Well, it's supposed to be Gibson and Spanky now that Homicide's been DQ, but can Spanky even continue? Uh, look at Homicide, he is in denial. He used that chain though, he got what he deserved. Referee caught him red-handed with that chain still wrapped around his forearm. And now Homicide stopping on oh, no. Spanky. We've seen this before, and he just hit Keener. Homicide is snapped. There's no call for any of this. This is like Reborn Stage 1. No, somebody's got to help Keener. Let's get some help. Homicide feels that he's denied the world title once again. And here comes, oh no, there's help. But the, the Rockwilders are in the ring. We have another Rockwilder riot on our hands. Spanky being helped to the back. That knee might be torn up. Gibson down after getting knocked up in the chain. Help trying to come from the back, but the Rockwilders have snapped. Homicide has snapped. We have a Rockwilder riot. Let's get out of here. We, we got a Sauronara feature we're going to have later. Let's go now. This is too much. Homicide ruining everything again. 
You are watching action from Full Impact Pro in Florida. It is Sauronaro against CM Punk. We are showing you this clip so you can see Sauronaro in action this afternoon at the special Do or Die 5 event featuring the best upcoming talent from all over the country. Sauronaro won a qualifying match and he then went on to win a four corner survival main event that featured Steve Madison, Jarrell Clark, and Claudio Castanoli. As a result of winning that match, Sauronaro will get future bookings in Ring of Honor. Sauronaro is just the first of many new faces you will see in ROH. Ring of Honor is always about bringing in the best young, hungry talent, giving them a platform to do what they do best, letting them make a name for themselves, making stars, and Sauronaro could be at the top of the list of names to watch as Ring of Honor presents more shows this year. Keep an eye on FIP, Sauronaro, and all the new faces heading into ROH.
bust your knee up, and you don't come in here cowboy up being man and take your butt whipping. Because Spanky, tonight, your cowardlessness is going to be another man's opportunity. I know there's a whole locker room full of guys you want to see come in here and try to beat my ass. Jamie, I want you to listen because you're not the only one that's not happy with the way the title match ended tonight. Spanky's in the back, he's getting his knee taped up as we speak. He wants the shot at the Ring of Honor World Championship more than anything. Are you ready? Do you want to meet Spanky one on one? All right. The word I have is that he will be ready later on tonight to challenge you for the Ring of Honor World Championship. You're accepting? All right, everybody. Hey everybody, Gary Michael Capetta. It's intermission time in Morristown, New Jersey, and uh, we're all psyched to see Spanky coming back for the Ring of Honor World title. And ladies and gentlemen, standing next to me, I've got Sal Renaro. Congratulations, Sal, this afternoon at Do or Die. You won the four corner survival match. It looks like you're going to be joining the uh, the roster of Ring of Honor. Well, th thank you, Gary Michael Capetta. I just, I just want to say I'm tickled pink to be here in Ring of Honor. It's an honor, it's a privilege. And I just hope to impress. We have no doubt about it. You've got a great history coming into Ring of Honor. And uh, we look forward to seeing much more from you in the future. Thank you. All right, everybody. Still to come, the title match, Spanky goes for the gold.
respect the Prince Nana, Alex Shelley, and the Crown Jew Jimmy Ray. You know what? These people here, I swear to you, these people don't know how powerful Prince Nana is. These people don't realize how great of a performer Jimmy Ray and Alex Shelley are together. But my friend Alex, you have done enough in the last couple of weeks. So my friend, as your gift from Prince Nana, you got paid by me already, right? You know what? You have the night off, my friend. You have the night off. Take it easy tonight. Hey, you know I love your stuff. You will be the next champion. Huh? But for now! Huh? For now! Hey, you move out of the way, huh? Stay over there! For now! To join you in this squared circle for this tag team match, I went out and I found a man from the deepest, darkest parts of the jungle. Ladies and gentlemen, Puma! on hand as Generation Next in the Embassy to do battle once again. Rejoining me at the broadcast table, Lenny Leonard. We've seen a lot develop between these two teams over the course of the past several weeks. And once again, it's coming to a head here in Morristown, New Jersey. Yeah, you saw right at the outset, looking at the, looking for the code of honor to start things off. Jimmy Raven, the Embassy, just refusing to shake the hands of Generation Next. And this issue is far, far from settled between these two factions. Alex Shelley taking the night off, basically, at ringside as Puma has been added to the mix as part of the embassy. 
And we're seeing some of his agility right here as he saves himself in the ropes, basically baiting Roderick Strong into that position. And now it's Puma taking him out on the dive. Nana on the outside with Jade Chung. What does he have her in tonight? What she, is she's, that? she's wearing a leash. It's, it's completely uncalled for. Just mistreatment of her as we've seen time and time again from Prince Nana. Brings her to ringside tonight. I guess she's finally done cleaning the royal toilets. Yeah, I guess so. Roderick Strong unleashing with the chops on the chest of Puma. Of course, we last saw him in action here in you Ring of Honor as part now. of the third anniversary celebration, parts two and three in Dayton and Chicago. And now aligning himself with Prince Nana. I guess Money talks. Twisting body press from Austin Aries, but he only gets two. Money does talk Nana, bringing in people from all over the industry to try and help in this feud. We saw Abyss not too long ago. Now he's got Puma in from Southern California, and the former world champ is going to work on Puma in the corner. This was generation next of Aries, Roderick Strong, and the newest member, Matt Seidel, getting the victory over the embassy in six-man action in Dayton last weekend. Uh, and of course, after the matchup, it was Abyss laying out all of Generation next post-match. Nice K brought right there from Aries. Only gets two and trying to stay on the mask, man. It was that victory over the embassy that enabled Matt Seidel to become a full-time member of Generation Next. Roderick Strong in there still against Puma. Double underhook, butterfly suplex, takes him up and over. Strong had a big win. He only gets a one count. He had a big win over Matt Hardy. Oh, perhaps the biggest oh. win of his career thus far. Yeah. Scoring that victory against Matt Hardy in Chicago Ridge. We've been saying for some time that it's not enough to just have great matches every time out. You have to start racking up wins. Roderick obviously taking that to heart as he pulled off, like you said, the biggest win in his career here in Ring of Honor so far. But Jimmy Rave, the crown jewel of the embassy, now going to work. Reversal by Roderick Strong. Runs into a couple of feet from Jimmy Rave, but catches him with a drop kick. Nicely done by Roderick Strong. He makes the tag, in comes Aries once again. The former ROH World Champion sends Roderick Strong in. Collides with Jimmy Rave. And a picture perfect drop kick in the corner from Aries. Only able to get two. You know, when you suffer a setback like Aries has done, losing the world title, there's one of two things that can happen to a wrestler. You either go into a funk, or you can regroup and try and get back on top of your game. And I can say that Austin Aries has never looked better than he has here recently. Puma lethal with those kicks. Catches Aries right on top of the head with that spinning kick. Hanging upside down in the corner now. Perhaps the uh, best attribute to Puma's wrestling ability is his kicking ability. Spinning in the face of Roderick Strong, distracting the referee just in time, and a low blow in the corner. Makes the tag. Jimmy Rave, the legal man, connects with the drop kick. Jimmy Rave falling to Austin Aries in Chicago Ridge. Seeing a renewal of that right here. Are you crazy or something? Chopping away at the chest of Austin Aries. Hard forearm shot across the back. Tags in Puma. A little bit of teamwork from the embassy. Of course, we got not only Nana, Jay Chung on that stupid leash, and Alex Shelley at ringside. The embassy always playing the numbers game. And now Aries being choked on his second row. And Puma connecting with the kick right to the spot. Aries in a precarious position, hanging over the ropes, calling a drop kick cover. Breaks the boot across the face of Aries right there. You know, I, I just got to cover to the broadcast booth because I am absolutely disgusted at, at what's going on with Jay Chung on the outside. The homecoming, we saw Gary Michael Capetta tell, tell Prince Nana that if there's any more abuse towards Jay Chung, physical abuse, that the embassy will be dropped from Ring of Honor. So what's Nana do? He, he covers her up and he puts a dog leash on her. So he can't physically handle her, but instead he drags her around with a dog leash. This is absolutely disgusting. And you know, I, I was I was up in the bleachers enjoying a beer and some popcorn, and I I just had to come and voice my opinion after seeing this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you go back to work, buddy. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. Oh, I, 
I completely understand your, your disgust with not on the outside, unable to afflict any physical damage on Jay Chong. He's now just going to use emotional abuse as finally Aries is able to make the tag. And Roderick Strong now going to work on the crown jewel, Jimmy Ray, with a series of hard chops. Irish whip. Light Larry catches him right on the chin. Roderick being very aggressive and Lenny Bowers not supposed to drink on the job. I Big back body drop. I won't tell if you won't cover by Strong. But he is right. There's no there's no call for any of the actions uh, with Prince Nana abusing Jade Chung. No matter how badly she may clean the toilets. Half Nelson backbreaker attempt, but no, Ray staying on his feet. And Puma connects with the kick to the chest. Roll up by Ray, he's got the tights. Oh, only two. Jimmy Ray with a handful of those new tights. Roderick switching from the long pants to the tights. Jimmy Ray with a couple of handfuls, dragging him up, trying to make that pinfall. Hard forearm shot from Puma and a chop to the chest of Roderick Strong. Scooping a hard slam, Puma's going to the outside. Nice senton, bringing himself back inside the ring into a lateral cross. Very close to the ropes though. Good ring positioning there by Roderick. You see Shelly taking a handful of Prince Nana's money himself. Unable to find any friends in the locker room with Ring of Honor, he decided to go for the money instead. Puma, another world-traveled athlete, much like Ricky Reyes, competing frequently in Mexico as well as Japan. A product of the Inoki Dojo out in California. And now, Prince Nana physically interjecting himself into the matchup, connecting with the forearm on the floor as Paul Turner, distracted by Jimmy Rave on the other side of the ring. And Aries! He's had enough. He's coming over to help his partner out. And all four men battling on the floor. And finally, Turner turns around and sees that he's lost control of this thing. Hard chop from Roderick, and he's caught with a boot from Jimmy Rave. Didn't see him coming. Aries finally sent back to his corner. Graham's holding the leg of Roderick strong as he's trying to crawl toward Aries to make the tag. Rave tags Puma back in. Double team work, holding him in the camel clutch as Puma getting momentum. Connects with the kick right to the mush. Floats over the cover. Aries, though, in to break it up with a boot to the midsection. Hard kick to the ribs from Aries. We got enough of the double teams of the Embassy. In there to save Roderick Strong. Snapmare by Puma. And there you see those kicks. Drives the knee down to follow up. The weapon of Puma Mask destruction. Only two. You see Jay Chung out on the floor. What is she? I know she's got the dog collar with that leash, that chain across her. What is, is that like a, a sack? Wait a second. What is she wearing? It's just a sheet. Jimmy Rave tagged back in. Holding on to Robert Strong as Rave driving the knee. Snap Mayer takes him down to the canvas. Wrapping the legs around the head. Trying to wear him down. Again, putting the ring in half. Keeping him away from Austin Aries. Look at the smirk on the face of Jimmy Rave. Sound strategy here, eliminating one half of the equation. Austin Aries coming on the outside. Roderick Strong showing some strength with the bridge. Able to get a near fall. Ray holding on to the head. Throwing a page out of the Alex Shelley playbook with the Golden Gate swing. Aries once again in to break up the cover. Another quick tag here. The embassy, nice teamwork from two guys who haven't teamed before, to the best of my knowledge. Prince Nana is a very shrewd businessman, chooses very wisely the members that he adds to the embassy, and he saw the talent in Puma that he has displayed in the past, and he's putting it to use to do his dirty work. Fisting away on the head and the neck of Roderick Strong. Turner getting right in there to see if Roderick needs to give it up. Lee staying in this matchup. Brown starting to get behind Roderick. A face lock held by Puma as Roderick tries to inch his way toward Austin Aries. Reaching for the tag, but Jimmy Rave into the ring. Draws the attention of the referee. He didn't see the tag, and, and he's not going to allow it. Didn't see the tag. He's forcing Austin Aries back out onto the apron. Jimmy Rave now going to go to work on Roderick Strong with that front face lock. Pulls him all the way down to the canvas. Again, trying to cut off the oxygen of Roderick Strong. Trying to slow him down. See if Roderick can keep his momentum after that big victory over Matt Hardy. Here in tag team action tonight. Shelly getting on some of the fans here. 
Shut your mouth! Jimmy Raven as well as Roderick Strong again trying to dig down. He needs again behind him as he's trying to get to his feet. Oh, he's he got to make the tag. He needs to make the tag here. He's right there in the corner, and, and again, this time it's Kumo taking the attention of the official. Once again, Aries is going to get ejected from the ring. And no tag. Raven Puma switching behind the referee's back. But Roderick with the inverted atomic drop and the backbreaker. High impact maneuver to the spine of Puma. Roderick Strong, can he crawl toward his corner and make the tag here? Yeah, able to buy himself some time. He's got to be able to make it across to Austin Aries, who is dying to get in this ring. He's been on the outside for some time now. Roderick with a kick to Puma, gives himself a little space. He makes the tag. He makes the tag. Aries up and over. Jimmy Rave tags in. And Aries fires a big left hand. And a second sends Rave to the canvas. We got basically a fresh Austin Aries who's been waiting to get back into this matchup. And Jimmy Rave begging for mercy. No such luck. Aries driving the knee into the thigh and a belly to the back. Drops Jimmy Rave right on the back of his head. Rave all the way out to the floor. Puma caught by Roderick Strong. Has him up in a torture rack almost. Drop kick to the face and driven across the ribs. Right on the knee of Roderick Strong is Puma. Drop kick gut buster combo. Nice teamwork from Generation Next. The embassy is out on the floor. And are taken down to the floor. Courtesy of Generation Next. Austin Aries with the dive. Roderick Strong up and over on a Jimmy Rave. They're going at it on the concrete here. Hard chop again for Roderick Strong. As Aries is on the outside with Puma. Roderick and Jimmy Rave back inside the ring. Puma fires Aries into the guardrail. Enabling the G generation next. Roderick Strong actually to be double teamed here. Come on, Puma. Puma and Roderick battling. Puma dumps him. Nice bridge. Roderick able to kick out. Aries finally able to crawl his way into the ring. All four men in the ring right now. Referee needs to get control of this matchup. Gonorrhea from Jimmy Ray into a cover. No, he kicks out. Two and a half. A lot of latitude here allowed by referee Paul Turner. All four men in the ring for quite some time. Roma demonstrating that he is a good find for Prince Nana here tonight. But it's Austin Aries with the momentum. Cut off by a kick from Puma. And a running knee strike covered by Puma. Roderick breaks it up. Long for Ray. Grabs that leg into a backbreaker. Roderick out to the apron now. Looking to make the tag from Aries. There it is. Puma though smartly crawls his way to his corner to tag in Jimmy Ray. Roderick ducks the clothesline and catches a chop. Trading chops, Jimmy Rave and Roderick Strong right in the center of the ring. Roderick getting the better of this and Jimmy Rave goes with a thumb to the eye. Jimmy Rave knows what Roderick brings to the table in terms of chops. He had no choice but to go to the eye. Once again, Roderick driving the knees to the midsection of Jimmy Rave. Was that running Yakuza? Rave gets out, he's on the ropes! Feet on the ropes and the referee saw that. Warns Jimmy Ray, looking to follow up here on Strong. Puma tagged back in, again with those lethal kicks. Kicking away at the chest. Fires him off. Rolling created by Roderick. Only gets two, holding on to the legs, Boston Crab. Quickly into the Boston Crab. Puma struggling, trying to make it to the ropes to break the hold. Pulls him back to the center. Shelly on the outside, pushing the ropes forward, but instead Jimmy Rave breaks it up for him. He's going for the Rave Clash. The Styles Clash. Back chop from Aries. Hip Nelson backbreaker. Aries tagged in. And Prince Nana taking the balance away from Austin Aries on the ropes as the referee had his back turned for them. Roderick chasing Nana and Jade Chung. Got niches in the middle of the ring. Big slam off the top for Aries. Puma comes charging and he tripped over the leash. Kick to the side of the head from Austin Aries. Jade Puma, brain buster. Jade 
Ashley Chung's leash was draped across the ring as she was trying to get away. Tripped up Pullman, enabling Aries to take control. Four. 4.50 and a cover by Austin Aries. Generation Mix has beaten the embassy. Virginia, are we? 
I happen to know that because I know for a fact that we are right here in Morristown, New Jersey. wouldn't happen to be your sister. <laughs> Which means, Prince, you're out of luck! Which means, Prince, the next time you lay your hands on her, I lay my hands on you. Yeah. Hey, Jane, I can talk all I want. Shut your face. But I can't make up your mind for you. Ultimately, you have to decide is it going to be the embassy or your new ring of honor family? I'm saying it's going to be him or is it going to be me? They seem to want a happy ending here. Oh, that's gross! A pretty happy ending, not that happy ending. You see what I'm talking about?
Well, we have a bit of a continuation of our ROH World Title matchup from earlier this evening. Homicide disqualified for putting that chain to use. Spanky carried away from ringside due to the injured knee. He couldn't continue, but James Gibson didn't want his first ROH World Title defense to end that way without him defeating both of his opponents. Spanky back into the ring. We're going to have a continuation one-on-one -on -one as we have well, basically a renewal of their debut matchup against one another back at third anniversary celebration part two in Dayton, Ohio. That one was a sportsman-like matchup, but since Spanky showed his true colors, turning on his best friend, James Gibson, this is gonna be a little bit different. And the title, this time, is on the line. And you see the heavily taped knee of Spanky suffered a serious, potentially serious injury at the end of that last three-way matchup. Like you said, Gibson did not want his first ever night defending the ROH world title to end that way. He's gonna put it up against his former best friend, the man who cost them the ROH world tag team titles, Spanky. Well, of course, the ROH world title means more to Spanky. He wants to earn that championship before he leaves and goes back to the WWE. He's on borrowed time here in ROH, but again, so is James Gibson. Gibson has said that he will remain here in Ring of Honor as long as he still holds on to that championship. And Spanky just wants to satisfy his own ego. He's one of the founding fathers, basically, of Ring of Honor. He wants to earn that championship by any means necessary before he leaves. And Gibson showing a little bit of, I guess, compassion. He had the opportunity right there to go to work on that injured knee, and he, he hesitated. I guess even though Spanky uh, turned on him in Chicago Ridge and showed that he's only after that belt, only out for himself, Gibson still showing some compassion for his friend. Gibson wants to show not just that he is the better wrestler, he wants to show that he's the better man, the better athlete here in Ring of Honor, and he will not use, even though it looks like he's about to wrap that leg around the ring post, no, he's going to take a shortcut. He can do it right now, but, but, he, but he's not going to. James Gibson is a sportsman. He plays by the rules. He takes pride in that. Now, you know, earlier on, we heard some fans, you know, like we said, we had a large contingent of fans here from New York, from Brooklyn in particular, came here to see Homicide win the world title. Obviously very disappointed not to see Homicide have the shot at the title. He cost himself that shot by using the chain. You know what, ROH could have saved this matchup, though, this world title match, for another show, but instead they decided that Gibson and Spanky are gonna fight through the pain. Look at the pain on the face of Spanky. Wait a second. There's nothing wrong with that knee. Oh, come on. He's faking it all along. Unbelievable. And he clicks his heels. Unbelievable. We're getting a bonus matchup here because the ROH officials care about the fans. They want to see the world title defended. And they're putting that match on here right now for these people here in New Jersey. Although they are upset not to see Homicide involved. He's got no one to blame but himself. Spanky taking it out to the floor as he pitches Gibson through the ropes. <laughs> Obviously, James Gibson, a man of compassion, not wanting to attack what he thought was the injured left leg of Spanky, and it's coming back to bite him in the ass here as he sent hard to the guardrail on the floor. Gibson paying the price, basically, due to the fact that he is a good man, that he is a sportsman. A man of honor. And now Spanky just choking away on Gibson with that athletic tape, that bandage that he had wrapped around the supposedly injured knee. There is no level that Spanky will stoop to to take the world title here from Gibson. That's how the pros do it. That's how the pros do it. Is that what they teach you in Stanford? Spanky in control, pulling Gibson back up, and again putting that bandage to use as a weapon, wrapping it around the throat of Gibson, just choking him. He's almost hanging. He's got him like a noose. Look at him dragging Gibson around with a neck. That's exactly what he's doing. It's just like a noose. Trying to hang James Gibson here. Pulling back on that on that bandage, just wrapped around the throat of James Gibson. That elastic from that ace bandage constricting the airflow to the throat of James Gibson, basically just choking the life out of him with Spanky. Gibson out on the floor. Spanky back out himself. When Gibson won the ROH world title from CM Punk in Dayton, he said it was the greatest moment in his career, his greatest achievement. 
that he wants to defend that championship and bring prestige to the ROH world title. Spanky, all about himself, much like Punk was during his title reign. Spanky's just looking for a trophy on his way out. Gibson wants to stay here as long as he possibly can. He said he's not going anywhere until somebody can beat him for that title. Gibson loves the level of competition that uh, the wrestlers find here in Ring of Honor. And he really takes pride in representing the promotion as world champion. Not only does he want to make it past Spanky, he wants to make it through Buffalo so he can take that ROH world title down to his home state of Florida and defend it one more time in FIP as well. Spanky chopping away at the chest of Gibson in the corner. Fans all over Spanky here as Gibson now tries to fire back and again Spanky right to the eyes with a thumb. Yeah, using his brain. Using his brain, using whatever tactics will do the trick. Whatever will get him the championship here tonight. Again, chopping away at the chest of Gibson. Spanky staying on it. Running chop into the corner. Here comes the flag. Taking his time, a little bit of showboating, and he pays the price as Gibson moves out of the way. And now lighting up the chest of Spanky himself. Took a little too much time, did Spanky, and he was caught by Gibson coming in. Reversal by Spanky, kicks him right in the face. And connects with the kick to the back of the head, sends Gibson through the ropes and out to the concrete. See the expression of pain on the face of James Gibson out on the floor. Obviously still having a little trouble breathing after he was hung by the ace bandage of Spanky. Back to his feet on the floor. Now he's just mocking the fans. Expecting a dive from Spanky. Instead he just waltzes his way to the other end of the ring and plants a foot right to the face of the world champ. Oh, the fans here in New Jersey can't stand Spanky. I mean, some of the fans in favor of Homicide trying to walk away with the title tonight. Well, another group of fans in favor of James Gibson retaining the title here tonight, but it's safe to say that nobody wants to see the cockiness of Spanky with the championship as well. Eye buster from Gibson. A little too much time again by Spanky up top. Caught by Gibson with a spine buster, almost a desperation move. Again, you see Gibson having trouble breathing there in the center of the ring, gasping for air. James Gibson came up the winner of their debut matchup in Dayton at the beginning of the year via submission with the front guillotine show. Of course, that was the uh, the fair matchup, the sportsmanlike matchup between these two. The honorable matchup between these two. Gibson now, though, with a flurry of offense, a series of hard strikes, sends Spanky reeling to the corner as Gibson pulls him out. Great buster! I guess the question is tonight, with Spanky using more underhanded tactics, will that do the trick, and will that earn him the victory against Gibson? That remains to be seen, though, as Gibson in control here on, Sp on Spanky. Dragging his leg over the ropes, the not injured leg, as he's now going to work on that knee, though. Well, he knows that Spanky doesn't have an injury, and now he'll, he'll focus on that body part and try to get the victory here. You know, he was hesitant earlier when he thought that he had an injured knee, and he didn't want to do more damage to it because Gibson's out there to get a victory, not necessarily to cripple the man. He was showing some compassion. But now he's just trying to soften up the body part that he knows isn't injured just to try to get the victory. Yeah, Gibson wants to be an honorable champion, but he is going to pull out all the stops. He's going to fight fire with fire here against Spanky, and he is going to work on that knee as he drives the thigh right across the knee. Step over Toho, looking for the figure four. Right in the center of the ring. Spanky trying to keep his shoulders up off the canvas. You know, you said he doesn't want to cripple the man. He's looking for a victory. Maybe Spanky pissed him off just enough that he is looking to cripple him. But Spanky with a reversal. Turns the figure four over, and they wind up in the ropes. Still with the figure four cinched in, and Mike Keener breaks the hole. Gibson up to his feet first. Right back to the knee. Sunset flip by Spanky, but Gibson rolls through. Spanky rolls through again. They're up in the ropes. Unable to get a fall. Both men rolling into the ropes. And a drop kick, basement style, right to the knee. Gibson again going to work. Sitting down across the knee. Tying up the legs once again. Putting more pressure on that leg. Knee and death lock almost here by Gibson. And bridging back for maximum pressure. 
Spanky in all sorts of pain, but he's also able to keep his shoulder up off the mat. And he reaches the ropes to force a break. It'd been very easy for Gibson to maybe get a flash pinfall there as Spanky in so much pain in the knees, unable to realize his shoulders are down, but he was able to get that shoulder up and avoid a pinning predicament. Gibson now firing knee strikes to the side of the face. Off the ropes, ducks the knee, and planted face first by Spanky as Gibson. Spanky holding on to that knee that Gibson has targeted for the past several minutes of the matchup. Can Spanky get back to his feet though? To even follow up. Crowd starting to get behind the champ as he struggles to get to his knees. Spanky on his feet. Looking for slice bread number two. Gibson blocks the attempt, rolls him up. Only gets two. Looking for the Tiger Driver. Spanky counter. Slice bread number two. No. Charge that knee. Gibson, butterflies the arms, Tiger Driver into a Rana, rolls through. Two and a half from Gibson. Tiger Driver one more time, he's going for it here. Takes out the leg, Jack Knight cradle, hooks the leg though, Gibson. He got him. James Gibson retains the ROH world title.
Ali is. I've been faded so all times. I'm the sage just like I really did. Yeah. Tonight, for the first time in history, the Ring of Honor Pure Title is the main event of the evening. Samoa Joe set to defend against the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. And Samoa Joe doing exactly what he set out to do when he won that title from his protege, Jay Lethal, and elevate the prestige of the Pure Title, much like he did the world title during his illustrious reign, and now it's the main event. Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe, two of the best technical wrestlers anywhere on the face of the earth. This could be a main event anywhere in the world, and we've got it right here in Morristown, New Jersey, as we get a clean break. Of course, the first meeting between these two competitors was back at Glory by Honor 2 in September of 2003. One of the best world title matches of Joe's world title reign. See how they do a little bit later here in 2005 with the pure title on the line. Yeah, that match was definitely one of the best matches I saw in all of 2003, and I'm sure this one is going to be every bit as good, if not better, under the pure rules as Joe goes to work on the arm. Brings Daniels down to the canvas, chest first. Actually, if you go back to 2002, you'll find that Daniels actually brought Samoa Joe into Ring of Honor as a member of the Prophecy before they had their falling out. That led to that group versus the Prophecy six-man at the first Night of Grudges in 2003. Now wrenching back on the head of Christopher Daniels. Joe wraps the legs around, trying to go for the Juju Katami here. He's Daniel, got those hands locked. Daniels doing a good job turning over, though. Able to get out of it, trying to lock in a rear chin lock, trying to get the arms around the massive back. Finally able to grab an arm there. He was going after the head, and Samojo successfully able to cover up the head to prevent Daniels from grabbing hold of it. Instead, he goes to work on the arm. 
Smart strategy here by Daniels, trying to take the bigger man off his feet, negate that size advantage, and keep Joe on the mat. Pulling onto the arm of Samoa Joe, trying to work his way back to his feet here, and he does. Both men in a standing position. Joe trying to take him down, keeps that arm. Nice reversal, use a back heel trip and take Daniels off his feet. Of course, last week in Dayton, Ohio, things erupted between these two as part of that four-way elimination ROH world title matchup. It was Christopher Daniels eliminated from the matchup, but he had his foot on the bottom rope as Samoa Joe had him choked. CM Punk pushing the foot off the ropes, the referee didn't catch it, and Daniels felt that he was unjustly eliminated from that match. And it got a little bit of payback on Samoa Joe, connecting with an Enzigiri, setting up CM Punk to then eliminate Joe from that matchup. There is an issue here between these two. Definitely a little bit of payback on the part of Christopher Daniels. A lot of history, like you said, between these two, dating all the way back to 2002. Nice nip up by Daniels, but Joe able to hang on to the arm. Keeping hold of the wrist lock. Daniels back in a standing position himself. Joe holding on to that wrist lock is Daniels. Grabs hold of the top rope, flips forward, and takes out the leg, and... Oh, he's getting called for a rope break there. He used the ropes rope to flip out of that arm bar. And he is being penalized one rope break. He oh. is down one break right now. He grabbed hold of the ropes while he was in a submission hold. A little bit of a judgment call on the part of Todd Sinclair there. I don't know... I don't know if I'd go so far as to call out a rope break. He wasn't in any danger of submitting. Well, it's all at the referee's discretion. And Todd Sinclair, senior official of ROH, saw that he was in a hold, reached the ropes, and that is a rope break. Look at the face of Daniels, obviously frustrated. He knows what a disadvantage it is to be down one rope break. Those things can come in very, very handy in the course of a match when you find yourself in a bad predicament and you need to escape. That wasn't a place where he was in a bad way. And he's at a severe disadvantage now because of it, I think. Goes after the leg of Samoa Joe. Down in the center of the ring. Keeping hold of that leg. Grabs hold of the arm of Samoa Joe, trying to break free. Also driving his side of his head into the shoulder there. As he's able to work his way to the front. Take a side headlock on Joe. Right in the center of the ring. Keeping hold of the side headlock as Samoa Joe up to one knee. Back to a standing position. Daniel still holding on to the side headlock. Joe fires Daniels off the ropes. Big shoulder tackle from Joe and Daniels is down in a heap. Up and over the big man goes. Went for a leapfrog to Daniels and he's called an inverted atomic drop and a boot right to the mush. Joe almost caves in the side of the face of Christopher Daniels. Joe with the advantage. Looking to pull Daniels back up off the canvas. A lot of Daniels supporters here tonight. Chop to the back, kick to the chest. Samoa Joe off the ropes and drives that knee down. That's the combo. Crowd seemingly split here between these two competitors. The pure champion in command. Daniels very excited to make his return back to ROH after a long absence, looking to get his hands on some gold. Went after the world title against CM Punk in that classic 60-minute draw. And now going after the Pure Championship, renewing this rivalry. Joe just lighting up the chest of Daniels with chops. Look at the paint etched on the face of Daniels as the massive hand of Samoa Joe takes up about half the side of the chest of Chris Daniels. Sends him in hard, running knee right to the face. Nowhere for Daniels to go but down. Daniels just clutching the side of his head. Samoa Joe very methodical in his offense here as he pulls him back up. Takes him down with the snapmare. Back to work on the leg, hanging up. Rape finds the legs, now pulling back on the face and the head of Daniels. Look at the pressure on the knees and the back of Daniels. And waits till the count of four to break. Taking full advantage of the referee's count. Utilizing the rules to his advantage right there. Daniels clutching at his neck. 
Joe spots an opening and drives a boot to the midsection as Daniels tries to back himself to the corner. Joe pulls him up though. Gonna pull him right back to the center of the ring. Joe holding him upside down with the vertical suplex. Letting all the blood rush into the head of the fallen angel. The fans here counting along. As he finally drops him down. Joe satisfied with himself, but taking way too much time to cover. Only able to get a two count, did not hook the leg, instead chose to just place the forearm across the chin of Daniels, able to kick out. So a dueling chance from the fans here in Morristown for their chosen wrestler. Heavy offense from Joe starting to wear on Daniels. Obviously, he's slow to get even to his knees. Daniels trying to clutch away at the leg of Joe, and he fires back with kicks. Well, 280 plus pounds of Samoa Joe crashing down across the chest and back. Again, Joe brings Daniels, trying to bring him up to his feet. Daniels firing back from his knees at the midsection to Joe. Another knee strike from Joe, make it two. Up and over goes Joe. Daniels goes for the hip toss, blocks the clothesline, and drives the knees right into the midsection. Well, that could be the momentum changer in this matchup. Past several minutes, Moa Joe has been largely in command. Daniels driving the knees into the chest, seeing if he can keep the advantage here. As he is really feeling the effects of Joe's onslaught thus far. Daniels fires away with a boot. Of course, next week we return to the Buffalo area with the Dragon Gate Invasion as two stars from that organization in Japan, including Sima, will be making their way to Ring of Honor. Christ Christopher Daniels working over the midsection of Samoa Joe in the corner, drives the knee in to follow up. It's gonna say Colt Cabana with a title shot of his choice next week on that show as well. Standing on the back of Samoa Joe, Referee applying the count. He may be facing the winner of this matchup for the pure title, or he may be facing the world champion, James Gibson, who successfully defended his belt. We're still waiting to find out from Cole Cabana just what match he picks by virtue of his victory tonight in that football hooligan rules Soccer matchup. rules. Daniels with the kick again to the rib cage of Samoa Joe. Lateral press from Christopher Daniels, but Joe able to roll that shoulder up off the canvas. Focusing on the rib region of Samoa Joe, of course he had those injured ribs that kept him out of action for a period of a few weeks, just a few months ago. Daniels realizes that and focusing on a potential weakness in the champ's armor. And now with the abdominal stretch cinched in. Again, going to work on the midsection of Joe. Not something you normally see applied on a man as large as Samoa Joe. For just that reason there, it's so easy for a guy that big to maneuver his way out. But Daniels, to his credit, is able to lock it back in one more time. And driving the elbow into the ribs of Samoa Joe as well, while keeping the abdominal stretch cinched in. Joe trying to inch his way toward the ropes. Hey, break, 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 and he reaches the ropes, and that's a rope break. break it Daniels driving the point of the elbow into the intercostals, those muscles in between the rib cage where the cartilage connects the two bones together. All sorts of pain for Samoa Joe right there as he's sent to the corner. Hard shoulder block from the mid in the midsection from Daniels. And a second. Joe firing his way out with a couple of knees. Trying to work his way out of the corner and keep Daniels away from those ribs. Chops now from the champ. Has Daniels down in the corner and Somebody got a dirty face. Samoa Joe in perfect position for the face walk. Daniels though catches him coming in. Joe was looking for the big boot. Daniels able to block it at the last minute by driving the boot to the midsection of Samoa Joe. And again, the crowd evenly split here in this main event. Pure title matchup between Samoa Joe and the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. One, Daniels two, with a cover. Two, oh, hold on, I, I got Artie, our producer, in my earpiece. He just informed me that Cabana will be up next with his choice of 
the title matchup next week at Dragon Gate Invasion. So stay tuned for that. As well, Seema versus AJ Styles has been signed for that event. As well, a tag rematch of the Embassy taking on Generation Next next week in the Buffalo area. What a show that is going to be a cover by Daniels. And of course, we got a big September upcoming with Glory by Honor 4 and Survival of the Fittest. As right now, the body scissors applied by Christopher Daniels on Samoa Joe, trying to wear the big man down. He's got his shoulders down, but Joe gets that shoulder up. Chopped to the chest from Joe, trying to get him out of that body scissors, but Daniels cranks down. Again, able to get a two count on Joe. Gotta wonder if Cole Cabana is waiting to see who the winner of this matchup is before he makes his announcement. Maybe wants to see if some damage is done. Maybe a champ comes into a match a little bit weaker than the other before he decides. Trying to chop his way out of this body scissors and relieve some of the pressure on his ribs. Trying to roll over and relieve that pressure. Maybe reach the ropes. Joe, what do you say? Come on, no! Joe very close to the ropes and he's gonna use his second rope break. He has one remaining. Rope break number two for Samoa Joe. Daniels, of course, has one gone with that controversial one called at him earlier on in the matchup. Samoa Joe very worn down, clutching at his ribs. It's Christopher Daniels in command. If you've ever had a rib injury, you know how difficult it is to breathe. And when you're that big and you have trouble breathing, it eliminates a lot of the offense and slows you down. And Christopher Daniels is still concentrating right on the midsection of Samoa Joe. Another cover after the elbow drop and a two count one more time. Joe almost gasping for breath there in the center of the ring. Difficulty breathing. And back to the abdominal stretch goes the Fallen Angel. Places it right in the center of the ring. Joe nowhere near the ropes here. Trying to hang in there. Daniel's wrenching back on the hole. Joe's legs starting to buckle from the pain. Trying to fight his way out. And he does. Samoa Joe with knee strikes. Chop across the chest of Daniels. And again. Daniels staying on his feet though. And drives the knee right into the ribs once again. Trying to sweep the legs of Daniels right into the power slam. Only gets two. Daniels running right into that power slam from Samoa Joe. Deceptively quick is Joe for a guy his size. And he goes right into the cross arm breaker. Can't get full extension as Daniels is trying to inch his feet toward the ropes. Daniels is fighting break, his way. That's the second rope break for Christopher break Daniels. Number two for Christopher Daniels. Each man has one rope break left. After they use that rope break, the ropes are in play for their opponent. Hard chop and down goes Daniels. Back to his feet, gets met with another. Ducks out of the way of that attempt, and now it's Daniels with the close fist. And that's a warning. Christopher Daniels been issued a warning for using a close fist. And, and Joe and Joe used the close fist too. And Both so men Joe receive warnings for the close fist. Close if either is caught using another close fist, it will cost them their final rope break. Joe now. Power bomb on Daniels. Right into the STF. He's got it locked in. Daniels is somewhat close to the ropes, though. Yeah, he locked it in very close to the ropes, maybe on purpose here. Either Daniels will give it up right here, or if he can reach the ropes, he'll use up his final rope break. Smart positioning by Joe. Daniels is going to have to either make it to the ropes or give up, because there is no other choice here. Because there is nowhere for him to go but to make it to the ropes. He's looking for the ropes, trying to crawl his way toward the bottom rope. Not quite within his grasp as of yet. And uses his that final rope break. Final rope break for Christopher Daniels. Normally in a move like the STF, you're going to see the wrestler in control pull back as far as he can while applying that hold. Looked like Joe did not pull all the way back, trying to force Daniels to make it to the ropes. Chin breaker from Daniels. 
as Joe Stun comes charging and step up Ben Zagiri right upside the head. Joe staying on his feet. Look at the clothesline. Daniels with him up. Samoan drop on the Samoan. And you can see when Daniels was caught in that STF, he was trying to decide whether or not he should give up that last rope break, and obviously he had no choice left in the matter. Beautiful moonsault off the second rope. But Joe with the shoulder up. Ah, come on, Joe. Ah, Joe, come on. Wrenching up on the neck of Samoa That's Joe here. All the while driving the knee right into the midsection again. Joe with some palm strikes right to the side of the face. And finally, Daniels has to break the hold. Samoa Joe back to his feet. More palm strikes. Getting all fired up. Samoa Joe off the ropes. But Daniels catches him and plants him. Could be looking for the best moonsault ever. But does he have enough energy to do it? Joe's in position. Cover! No! Looking for the Koji clutch. Joe's in the center of the ring, nowhere to go. Could we see the pure title change hands here in Morristown? Joe, come on! Referee checking on Joe's condition. Joe has had trouble breathing earlier in the match with all the work on the midsection. Oh, he's so worn down. He's so worn down. Look at his face. The arm's going limp. That's two. One more time, and we're going to have a new pure champ. No. No. He's still got some fight left in him. Joe trying to crawl toward the ropes, and he reaches it with his foot. Both men have used up all of their rope breaks. That is the third and final rope break for Samoa Joe. And the ropes are in play for both men. But how much has been sucked out of Samoa Joe right here? Daniels looking to follow up. Again, working over those ribs. Driving to the end of the rib cage. Running forearm shot to the side of the head. Joe staggers. Another one by Daniels. Joe still not off his feet though. Running boot right to the face and Daniels is knocked flat. Samoa Joe needs to go for a cover right here. Very worn down by this point in the matchup. Sinclair applies the double count. Both men feeling the effects of this battle. Daniels is not moving. Joe back to his feet. Looking to try to finish him off. Daniels is limp. As the dueling chants go up once again. Daniels into the buckle. Joe comes charging and winds up crouching himself on the top rope. Daniels dropped down. He saw Joe coming at the last minute. Now Joe set up on top. Palm strike from Daniels. Joe trying to fight off this attempt by Daniels. Going for another palm strike, and Joe's looking to, looking to choke him out now. The ropes are in play. Completely illegal, he's got him tied up in the ropes. He's looking to choke him out in the ropes. He is dragging Daniels, pulling back. He's got him hanging in the air. Daniels can't get his feet on the ground. Christopher Daniels has got to tap out. Samoa Joe retains the pure title here in the main event of Night of the Grudges 2. Wrestling champion, Samoa Joe. Daniels hung up in the ropes. There was nowhere for him to go. He had to tap out. Your winner and still pure champ, Samoa Joe. We will see you next week in Williamsville, New York, right outside of Buffalo, for the Dragon Gate Invasion. For Jimmy Bauer and Lenny Leonard, I'm Dave Prezak. So long, everybody.
Rappers looking for crack the rap Now you put out two anthems a year And I just want to buy for a century We didn't chase the book with the documentary If you can't do nothing I'm gonna flow like a bitch Like a mother's in the low Let's go Don't worry about the world Hey there, wrestling fan, Sugar Sean Price, and I am here with classic Colt Cabana. Cabana, what a hell of a match for you and McGinnis tonight, but now, because of your win, you got a choice of the pure title or the ROH gold. What are you thinking, brother? Let me tell you something, Nigel. Me and you have been at it a while, and what a way to go out, my friend. What a way, and I will call you my friend, because you and I gave it our all tonight. You see, you gave it your all, I gave it my all, and maybe I was the better man tonight, because I showed what dedication, what heart I had, and there was another reason to it. It wasn't just because I wanted to beat you, Nigel. It wasn't just because of all the beatings, and the headbutts, and the bollock shots you gave me. It was because I knew if I was to be the winner, I would have a choice, and there is no choice. There really isn't. Because when it comes down to it, I love pure wrestling. But it's time for Colt Cabana to make his mark. Man, I fought Samoa Joe, and I just wasn't ready. Austin Aries, it just wasn't my time. But now, James Gibson, I'm calling you out. It's time for Colt Cabana to shine. It's time for Colt Cabana to become ROH's lead man, baby. This ain't a smile. There ain't no jokes. James Gibson, the world title, Ring of Honor. I'm coming for you. We are Don and Marcos, the Ring Crew Express. And tonight was the biggest victory of our careers. And it's just the beginning. Fellas, you know, for three years in this company, you are our first match in this company. But it goes beyond that. I've known you your whole career. In fact, I gave you your start. You both know it. DeVito, he's at the hospital right now getting stitched up because you gave us a war tonight. And I just want to say, I'm proud of you. the right thing. So you had the chance. You got the win. I'm proud of you. Let's go pick up DeVito and get some beers, huh? Alright. 50 Club. wrestling.com 215-781-2500 for all your merchandise needs much more than ring of honor merchandise at rohwrestling.com check it out for dvds from wwe tna lots of independent promotions plus rare merchandise from japan the straight shooting series the secrets of the ring series roh live event tickets shirts hats figures much much more check it out for all your wrestling merchandise needs rohwrestling.com 215-781-2500.